Easton artist Jackie Lima received her MFA from Brooklyn College, City University of New York, after which she lived, worked, and exhibited in New York City for 25 years. Easton became her home in 2005. She has been teaching since 1983 in universities in New York and New Jersey. Now she teaches several online art courses at Fairleigh Dickinson University. Jackie's artwork engages perspective in different ways through a variety of media. These ways of looking and seeing are all related to the cutting up of the visual field, pulling it apart, rearranging it in many different ways. Part of the vision for this work to include the City of Easton's particular climate-related mitigation plans. So I developed a way to include that information into a visual idea I had been working with. This mixture enabled me to understand this work as research-driven art. How did the information gathered from the community through the CREATE project inform your piece? I uh, use it as information and as subject, incorporating it as a word cloud where the words used most frequently by community members highlight the most common answers and present the data in a visual way that everyone can understand. In this case, it served my work on being internet driven and visual and representing a cloud holding together the subject of weather and climate change. There's sort of three layers. One is the word cloud, which I did discuss. And then the other is the next layer is the seven paintings from around Easton and Forks. The third layer is strips of aluminum and the, and the one on the, which sort of reads like a book. The one on the left uh, is, is the history. So it's like, it starts in, in ancient America, basically. Okay, so the history of coal and how that has caused most of our hazards that we are dealing with now, which is warming, flooding. So then on the fourth panel, um, it's about Easton joining with the globe because this is a global problem at this point. And then in the last column, I started seeing, you know, what people are doing. And I did, couldn't even really get to all the stuff. I focused on food mostly in the last panel um, because it just seemed to be a lot of what it's about. That's what we're trying to sustain ourselves, right? And, and the world. So about the seven paintings of different areas of Easton. Well, I focused on gardening and on food distribution, and on the center square, which is visually connected to the university, right up the line. If you're at the university and you look down the, the stairs there, you go right to the monument. And I love that I got this boy uh, playing basketball in the square. And I learned a lot of things, I would say, about Easton doing each one of these. Each one of these gave me a lot. Um, and that one had to do mostly with the kind of freedom that all different kinds of people have. It, it, it's real, you know, Easton is remarkable for its diversity, I think. It's one of the reasons I live here. So it was really interesting to watch all different kinds of people feel very free in that space. So then going out to the um, Bushkill Park, the people who work there really love the place and they grew up going to the place and having it be a part of their childhoods. And they've gone there to run the rides and play with the kids and be a positive energy. Of course I have a painting of the Nurture Nature Center because they're an important Part of Easton and the new bridge that covers um, goes from the Carl Sterner Arts Trail over to the Silk Mill and the kids were playing 
And the last panel has to do with food, and that food distribution is a, is a, um, a collaboration, really, between the university and the West Ward Partnership Program. That's how it got started. Now the program isn't in existence anymore, but different people have stepped up. As Like I say, the institutions are stepping up. And they distribute fresh vegetables to uh, people in the West Ward. And what do you hope the community will take away from your mural? That the hazards have to be taken seriously, that everyone has a part to play in envisioning the future, and that our institutions have stepped up to the plate. That's what I learned. And has this project altered the way you feel about the concept of resiliency? So I think that adaptation spoke the loudest to me because I think that's what the people have always done, have always had to do. I will say that since I've been working on this, I'm trying to turn it into something else, although I'm really not sure. But um, I, you know, we have to be clear to be to be able to shift who we are, not just to change everything out there, but to change who we are and how we think, so that we can do our part to affect a change into the future, we have to bend. I think all humans have to bend.